What's up? This is Courtney Shiloh, and you are now watching Team Rich TV. It's been some months since I heard from you. I got my shit together. Who is Courtney Shiloh? Um, Courtney Shiloh is a singer, songwriter, painter, artist, just all around. Just love to be creative. Um, that's that's my favorite. Hate to say that I told you so, but I tried to tell you a long time ago. But you know, good nigga, you ain't missing go figure. I ain't tripping, girl. I still got your back though. And if you ever wanna ride, let you know I got back though. And you know that for sure. Got the keys in my purse, catch them in the wrong spot, and scratch it up for the low low. Fucking with my girls, it's a no no. Fucking with my girls, it's a no no. All in the six when we roll up. Dressing all black, we roll up. And I keep a bag of the sticky that we roll up. He don't know, so I guess we gotta show him. When did I first start recording my music? Uh, the first song I ever recorded was in high school. I was in, uh, I think, 11th grade. I made a song when I was running for homecoming court, and I was trying to like find something cool to do to like convince people to vote for me. So I made this song and like put it on CDs and passed it out. But that was technically my first experience. Uh, me and Prince Cannon, aka Prentice, we had a relationship from being both in um, Mr. Ingram's choir. Although we didn't go to school together, we uh, we all knew each other. We had connections with Mr. Ingram. So that's how we met. And he asked me to work on a mixtape with him. And this was about, I think, 2011. And we worked on it for about two weeks. It didn't take long, but every day we were there recording. Uh, we were doing covers to songs that were like popular at the time and remixing them. Um, and that was kind of like the first time that I dropped an official project. And that was um, a life-changing experience for me. I learned how to write music. I, like, I studied him and how he recorded. I learned about how, this, like, how studio works, uh, like for real, for real. So that was like my first official um, project that really got me going, especially like in Beaumont, because people didn't know that I like recorded music because I was used to doing like covers and stuff like that. So, yeah. <laughs> love or something positive I will write positive songs but because I haven't yet they just my songs are based off of what I go through I'm not gonna lie I'm gonna be honest I don't like having to like I feel like censor a lot of things that I do it's like certain certain stuff that I be wanting to do but I just know I can't do it because there's so many like eyes on me that I don't want to watch me but I I can't blame them because I know kids are nosy right so like they go look up everybody and they always end up finding me and it's really annoying like I hate it but at the same time music has not given me the same financial stability that working a nine-to-five has so I really have no choice but to work that nine-to-five but at the same time I feel like it does stifle my career in so many ways because I can't be 100% myself anymore now that I have that career as well so hopefully one day I won't have to, to do both and I could really be myself 100% as an artist. I ain't in the business of hurting feelings. Baby girl, if you don't know your nigga, I'ma tell you who you're dealing with. See, when I met him, he told me he wasn't with you. He was in it for the kids, and there was nothing more between you. As the story unfolds, you're looking more like a joke. Don't get it twisted, it is your man that won't leave me alone. Call, call him my phone, he swears that I am the one But he for all of these hoes, girl, don't act like you ain't no But you know niggas, they lie niggas, they You lie. know what I was for, why you signed up yeah. Talking all that shit, don't make me find ya Ooh. I be laid back, feeling like recliner um, So I'm actually working on my uh, Master of Fine Arts right now I go to Houston Baptist University 
and I'm getting my MFA in studio art. And I should be finished in May 2023. I also just became a certified art teacher as well. So I moved to Houston about a year ago. I moved to start school. Like I mentioned uh, that I was uh, in grad school. So that's why I moved out there. Um, and I have been doing like open mics. There's a couple people that have really helped me to um, get a platform in Houston uh, with the live music scene. Um, shout out to Erica Nocturnal. She was really, really instrumental in helping me get on these um, different stages in Houston. Um, Benji Music is another one who has put me on to a lot of different live music venues and things like that. So um, I try to perform at least at least once a week if I can. Um, there's so many different open mic spots in Houston um, to to choose from. So I'm just blessed that people are starting to um, to take notice of my talent out there as well, um, especially when it comes to like the live music scene. <laughs> I think it's just not mainstream like it used to be. You don't really hear too many super, super R&B songs on the radio like you used to. And I think a lot of rappers have come in and kind of infiltrated the R&B scene because they like, with auto-tune now, you can like sing and you're not gonna sound a mess even if you really can't sing. So a lot of rappers are starting to to sing and so the lines are kind of blurred. So I think that's what makes people think that R&B doesn't exist. But it's not that it doesn't exist, it just doesn't exist on the mainstream level. So you really have to kind of dig and, and find um, people that still do R&B because there's still plenty of people uh, that do R&B music. I work with a lot of R&B artists. Uh, I work with John Drea. I work with um, Prince Cannon. Still, you know, still sings. I work with Eric Carter. So it's there. People are still singing and making R&B music. It's just like it's just not being put out how it should be mainstream. See, I seem to have a type And I know it's a problem Need something to solve it Need something to help Clear my mind No, I can't do better But I haven't found better It's a habit that I've been trying to fight It's a thing I can't describe but a certain type of guy I can't explain it, but I like what I like I just hate sleeping alone at night I sleep much better when there's someone by my side I sleep much better when there's someone by my side I know I feel good, don't you? Maybe love a few more shots now Put myself together, let me think, think, think I definitely think that is what got me my start. Uh, I was on YouTube before YouTube was like popular as it is now. I think my first video on YouTube was like 2006, 2007. So um, back then, uh, that was really a big thing was covers. I remember like Dondria was popular back then and she's I think the person that inspired me to, to start making those covers. But it definitely got my name out there. It was people from everywhere um, that got to see that, uh, you know, me singing and stuff like that. And I was getting pretty good views back then. Um, in regards to Peasy, uh, he definitely was inspirational as far as like getting me to do my own music. Um, and uh, he was one of the first people to help me like book a music video. Um, he used to like let me get studio time. I don't know if I should tell people that. But, you know, he was very, very helpful um, and very encouraging as far as me, like, pursuing, like, a solo career, because I guess a lot of people had associated me with good printers. And so he was really encouraging as far as, um, like I said, getting my solo stuff off the off the ground. Um, Trill Art was very, very um, important in my career as well, especially when I first came out. Uh, he did a lot of my my uh, most, I guess, viewed videos, and he's a, he always does a really, really good job. Oh yeah, shout out to B Child. B Child's in my very first video, so that was to, that was an invitation. I think music videos are 
very important because a lot of people like to see the visual that goes with the song. I think it can make or break a song. Sometimes the song might even be not that great, but the video might be good. And so it'll make people like, listen to it anyway. It might grow on them because they like the, the video. So I think you definitely need that visual to go with the music to make your single really pop. Top five R&B artists of all time. Okay, we have, of course, Beyonce, my list. Uh, Aaliyah, Mariah Carey, Brandy, and Jasmine Sullivan. Uh, if you want to find me on social media, uh, you can follow me on Instagram at Shiloso, S H I L O S O. Um, same thing with my Twitter. I have a TikTok, but I don't really like it. What's up? This is Courtney Shiloh, and you have been watching Team Rich TV.